today I'm just gonna do a quick oil change on the cruiser. Uh, she's slightly overdue for it, so that's not really gonna matter too much if you're only sort of, yeah, maybe a thousand Ks or so over for your service. But uh, look, to change out your oil and your oil filter, in my eyes, it's cheap insurance. You can look after your engine, you're gonna prolong everything. Let's, uh, let's, let's get to that. I'll quickly show you exactly what I'm using uh, whilst I'm doing the service. We'll get the camera out. Oop. All right, so what are you gonna need for this? So you're gonna need the special tool to be able to go over the end of the filter housing and um, there's a 3 8 drive for that. So you get these at Repco, obviously you need a filter. You also need your oil. Now I'm using the Penrite uh, 10W40 um, or the diesel HPR10. I reckon it's a good oil. I've used it a few times on other four wheel drives that I've had previously. I never had a problem with it. The car runs quite smoothly after a, uh, an oil change. Whether that means that it's related directly to the HPR10 or not, or just that it's fresh oil, who knows. Anyway, so as I said, you know, 3 8 drive for that. Um, so there's a 3 8 ratchet, an extension. 14 mil socket, now the 14 mil socket, you'll need that to undo your sump plug. Um, then just a couple of, uh, couple of funnels there. Somewhere to catch some of the dirty oil. And I've actually got my old oil drum for that too. So I'm gonna set that up with a, with an oil filter, not filter, oil uh, funnel, just underneath the car. So um, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get underneath the car and we'll start draining the oil out of the sump. All right, so we're out of the car at the moment. What I was actually referring to before, that there is the, uh, the filter housing. So I'll go and get that cap in a sec and I'll show you how it actually uh, goes on and, and sort of undoes the, uh, the filter housing so you can pull the filter out. And then of course, the old sump plug, where are you? There it is. There's a sump plug there and that's only a 14 mil socket. So I'll go and grab the rest of it and we'll get cracking. Wow, it's not a, uh, not a massive amount of space underneath here, but there's enough to do what I need anyway. So with a 14 mil socket, um, I'm just gonna drain the oil out of the sump. So what I've got set up here at the moment is we've got the funnel directly going, well, going directly into the old uh, 20 litre drum. Um, so I'm just going to loosen that off and hopefully catch all the oil that comes out of it. So <laughs> the key word is hopefully. So anyway, we'll get onto this. We'll drain all of this out. It was a little bit tighter than I'd hoped. Can I pull that out of the way a little bit? You notice I've got a whole heap of rags here as well. than I'd planned, oh my gosh. Wow, I've done an oil change before on this girl and I've never had a go like that. So what happened was the sump plug itself actually ended up going into the, into the funnel. <laughs> so <laughs> the key point there is uh, grab a hold of the sump plug and don't actually let it fall into the funnel that you're trying to collect the oil to go down into the, into the uh, oil drum because, well, it clogged it up and uh, yeah. Well, you know the rest of it. Let's go and have a look at this, eh? Hey? It's not too bad, but there's certainly a little bit of a mess there. I have cleaned up some of it. So thankfully, not too much went on the driveway, but I'll reach in and get that sump plug and we'll give that a bit of a clean up. All right, so here it is, the old sump plug. So what you'll notice about the sump plugs on these things is around the top there, that's actually sort of, uh, it's a bit of a magnet. So if there's any, um, any metal filings or anything like that flying around, which this one's actually pretty clean, so it's, uh, it's, it's good to see. I uh, changed the oil about 10,000 k's ago. I think it was just prior to us going up and doing the next mouth trip. Since then, I've done a few little camping trips. Uh, nothing major, which kind of sucks. Work always gets in the way, as, you're, as you can all understand. So what I like to do is just give it a good clean, make sure there's no, uh, well, as little crap as you can on it. And uh, yeah, get ready to put it back in. Wow, 
What a mess. That's all right. Look, it's nothing that can't be cleaned up, so. Whew. We'll give it all a bit of a clean up. I reckon I'm gonna chuck that sump plug straight back in so I can pull this oil pan out and give it a bit of a clean. I've changed some oil in my time. But that's uh, probably one of the one of the messiest oil changes. Wow. Anyway, enough about that. All the tools are cleaned up again. Just got to clean this up a little bit, and um, yeah, we'll crack we'll crack on. Give all this just a, a quick wipe down, and hopefully, when I take the oil filter out, it's not going to go everywhere. But oh man, I reckon. With this, I'm just gonna pull the whole tarp out. There's no more oils dripping around anywhere, so we'll pull that out, we'll give it a good clean up. This is the RST206 made by Ryko. Let's get the focus there, there we go. So, you need a 3 8 drive for this. Um, you've got the grooves there which go over, cut the corresponding tabs on the, on the cartridge cover itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up, chuck the 3 8 drive in there, and we'll take it out. Uh, there will be a bit of oil, but it's not gonna be a massive amount. Now that's how it's supposed to go. <laughs> All right, so this is the filter cartridge housing. So the new cartridge just goes onto that. As you can see, there's a little bit of muck and all sorts of stuff in there. Just give a little wipe out within the kit for this filter here, which is the R2651P by Ryko. Get this little plug. The new filter element. And you get two O-rings. Okay, so with my oil filter, um, and my filter cap housing um, It's a little bit different in the way that you know I don't need to use this little plug that comes with it or replace this little black o-ring here So anyway, we'll move on to this the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change out this o-ring very very gently Come in just underneath the o-ring like so Okay, so just nice and gently in and through and leave it off like that this uh, Give this o-ring seat a bit of a clean, just with the rag. It's a nice quick little wipe out. Just like so. There's a new O-ring. So what I like to do is I'll actually get a little bit of fresh oil on it. So I've got a new oil drum here. And just run it through your fingers like that. All right, grab your cap over the top and just sort of sit it inside where inside that, uh, well, the seat for the O-ring. So nice and easy and just run your fingers around so it sits in there nicely. Give it a good uh, good lube up around the edges as well. So that is ready to go. Get your filter. I always go writing it out. And that just slides over the top of that, uh, that spindle on the inside there. So what I also like to do is just to check the springs in the actual uh, cap itself. Is just to give it a nice gentle push down. Do that a couple of times. And what that does is it indicates that it's uh, free to move up and down. Well, I'm not really free to move up and down, but it's nothing, not gonna catch on anything on the spindle. There's no burrs on the spindle or anything like that that's gonna potentially uh, ruin the integrity of, uh, of your filter. But that, that is ready to go to be reinstalled. Uh, Penrite, when they give you the oil, well, when you buy the oil, this actually comes with the drum, so just a spout. It's got a little, uh, little pimple-like looking thing here. Well, you, you slice the top of that off so that when you're pouring the oil in, just makes life a bit easier. All right, so where you want the oil, it's but it's. When you fill it up, you sort of want it on that little top little notch there. I don't know if the camera's actually going to focus in on it or not, but uh, anyway. So when you fill it back up, you sort of want it on or just above that line. So I'm going to chuck this dipstick back in, start the engine up, and we'll go from there. All 
All right, so now that's run for a little bit. Oil's all through the galleries, through the engine, through the filter and the pump. We're just gonna let that sit for five minutes, maybe 10. We'll come out, we'll check the level and top up as required. Probably, oh, I reckon we'll easily put another litre in. Well, that's it guys thanks for watching the video that was just a very quick somewhat disastrous effort at uh, changing oil in a cruiser i've changed it out a few times a couple of times before but uh not like that Lucky anyway it ended up well <laughs> that's right so anyway look um don't forget when you change oil or anything like that if you've got any right any waste uh, sort of oily waste stuff and uh, your dirty oil yep. make sure you dispose of that properly take it down to your local tip and dispose of it in, in accordance with all your your council regulations wherever you guys are and either in australia right or abroad that's right, so we've got to make sure we put it, not in the environment, but in the right place. Yeah, and it's wrong to put it in the wrong environment. Sure is, sure is. So I think next time, next episode, it'll probably be, uh, oh, I don't know, I reckon I'll be doing the diff oils. I was going to do that this morning, but run out of time. So you anyway, never know. You never know. Anyway, look, stay tuned for further episodes. Yep. Stay tuned.